Welcome to a lesson on using an integrating factor to form an exact differential equation. Sometimes a differential equation in the form of m dx plus n dy equals zero is not exact, but it can be made exact by multiplying with a function u of x comma y. That is perhaps for some non-zero function u of x comma y, u times m dx plus u times n dy equals zero is exact. And any solution to this new equation is also a solution to the original differential equation. Here's the approach we take to determine a possible integrating factor. We first verify the differential equation is not exact by verifying the partial of n with respect to y doesn't equal the partial of n with respect to x, or the difference of the first order partials does not equal zero. Once we verify this, we take the difference of the first order partial derivatives and divide by n. If this quotient is a function of only x, we call the function p of x, and the integrating factor will be u of x equals e to the power of the integral of p of x dx. If this quotient is not a function of only x, then we'll take the difference of the first order partial derivatives and divide by m instead, and if this is a function of only y, then we call it q of y, and let the integrating factor be u of y equals e to the power of the opposite of the integral of q of y dy. So again, once we verify the differential equation is not exact, we take the difference of the first order partials and divide by n. If it's a function of only x, the integrating factor is u of x. If it's not a function of only x, then we try dividing by m. If this is a function of only y, then we let the integrating factor be u of y. Let's try solving the differential equation below. First, if we want, we can write the differential equation in differential form. We can think of multiplying both sides of the equation by dx. In the form on the right, we can see m is equal to the quantity x squared plus y squared divided by the quantity x plus one, and n is equal to two y. And now let's determine the partial of m with respect to y and the partial of n with respect to x. To find the partial of m with respect to y, we differentiate m with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us two y divided by the quantity x plus one. To find the partial of n with respect to x, we differentiate two y with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us zero. So we now see this is not an exact differential equation, and now we determine the difference of the partial of n with respect to y and the partial of n with respect to x. And again, because this difference doesn't equal zero, we know we don't have an exact differential equation. So now we're gonna take this difference and divide by n, which in this case is two y. Dividing by two y is the equivalent to multiplying by one over two y, and notice when we do this, we do get just a function of x. We get one divided by the quantity x plus one, and therefore we call this function p of x, and the integrating factor is going to be u of x, which is equal to e to the power of the integral of p of x dx, which in our case gives us e to the power of the integral of one over the quantity x plus one dx, giving us e to the power of natural log of the quantity x plus one, which simplifies to x plus one. So now we know the integrating factor, u of x is x plus one. So we multiply both sides of the differential equation by x plus one, which I've shown here below in blue. Simplifying, we get the differential equation, the quantity x squared plus y squared dx plus two y times the quantity x plus one dy equals zero. And this differential equation should be exact. Let's continue on the next slide. The first step will be to verify this is an exact differential equation. If you need the review, I have notes on how to solve an exact differential equation here in the lower right-hand corner. Notice in this new form, m is equal to the quantity x squared plus y squared, and n is equal to two y times the quantity x plus one, or distributing, we have two xy plus two y. Next, we find the partial of m with respect to y, which is two y, and the partial of n with respect to x is also two y. So notice now we do have an exact differential equation, and therefore the solution will be big F of x comma y equals c, such that the partial of big F with respect to x equals m, and the partial of big F with respect to y equals n. From here, we can either integrate both sides of the first equation with respect to x, or integrate both sides of the second equation with respect to y. Let's go ahead and integrate both sides of the first equation with respect to x, so that we can recover the function big F of x comma y. Just remember, 
because we're integrating the partial of f with respect to x on the left, when we integrate the right side, we're not gonna have just plus c for the constant of integration, we'll have plus a function of y. Integrating both sides of the first equation with respect to x, we have big F of x comma y equals the integral of the quantity x squared plus y squared dx, which gives us one third x cubed plus x y squared, and then plus a function of y, which I'm calling a of y. And now we'll use the second equation to determine a of y. The second equation states the partial of f with respect to y equals n. So looking at big F, the partial of big F with respect to y is equal to the derivative of one third x cubed plus x y squared plus a of y with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us the partial of big F with respect to y equals zero plus two x y, or just two x y, and then plus a prime of y. And again, this must equal n, which is equal to two x y plus two y. Analyzing the equation, notice this indicates that a prime of y equals two y, and now we can recover a of y by integrating both sides with respect to y, which gives us a of y equals the integral of two y dy, which equals y squared. So now we know big F of x comma y is equal to one third x cubed plus x y squared plus a of y, which is y squared. And therefore the general solution is big F of x comma y equals c, or one third x cubed plus x y squared plus y squared equals c. So this is the implicit form of the general solution. Let's go ahead and solve for y. To do this, the first step will be to subtract one third x cubed on both sides, which I've shown here at the top. Next, we'll factor the left side by factoring out y squared, and then we'll divide both sides by the quantity x plus one, and then we'll take the square root of both sides of the equation and include a plus or minus. This gives us y equals plus or minus the square root of the quantity c minus one third x cubed divided by the quantity x plus one. I hope you found this helpful.